Okay. I wasn't fibbing. And here's the best part is that I just, I, I won a whole bunch of ladies with that. And a couple of guys, because what's funny is, is that when I deployed, uh, there was always like random women that had strange figurines that they would take photos of, of like where they were so they could send them back to their kids and stuff. You know, so they could like, hey, look, this toy traveled with me. And uh, guys, what guys tend to do was buy a toy for their kid and say, just like talk to this toy. Or they would get like a stuffed animal with their face on it or their heartbeat in it or something else like that. But ironically, like even action figure therapy, like all of that kind of comes back from a bunch of soldiers and stuff missing their family and talking to figurines like they were their kids. Now that's modern American soldiers. Modern American soldiers do that stuff. Just like the fantasy movies you see where people pull figurines of their kids out of a box and talk to their kids. Just like, just like, just like. So sometimes, sometimes the gods were literal family spirits like my wife, my mom, my sister who's not with me. So even just having my son not be with me I can have a frozen little girl doll represent a child in general to me. And I can say things like, remember you have a little girl, remember you have a little girl. Because um, what I used to tell myself when I was having a horrible time before I had my son was, remember you have a little girl, but I meant you have Savannah. Like sometimes Savannah really was, and she needs to know that too. Savannah, you helped me out a couple of times. When, I, when I'm just sitting there going like, what the hell am I doing? Why am I in another country that doesn't care about me? Why am I in another country that everyone hates me? And I'd just be like, ah. Well, at least somebody that Savannah knows has been somewhere. Or anything like that. Just anything. But it, it's still me thinking about Savannah. Not thinking I'm better than her, but thinking like, at least she knows one guy that's left her zip code. But I brought her with me, and sometimes it was in a little action figure that just reminded me of my niece. So, when Caleb would ask me questions about action figures and things like that, Sometimes I've actually had conversations like I just had explaining that. But I did it over the course of a 20 minute like, let me explain that word to you. Because I used a couple of big words there. I usually just have that. Like my goal is to say, sometimes when you go someplace, you might bring an action figure to remind you of someone. And I want to say that to Caleb, but I don't really know how to, so I just say it. And then I'll ask him, do you understand? And he'll say, no, because I don't expect him to. He'll be like, no. I'm like, okay. And then I'll just start talking. And every time he doesn't understand a word, sometimes we'll spend 10 minutes just explaining that word to each other. And a handful of times, he's he's come back since he's gotten older. He's a handful of times he said, Dad, I don't think I'd use that word. And I said, okay, well, what word would you use? And he gave me a different word. And I said, well, I think we're going to wind up at a different point if we use your word. But I like your word. It, it could have been for osmosis. It doesn't matter. But that's how I explain stuff. That's how you Socratically explain things is you tell them what you want them to hear first so that there's no mystery. Start the conversation with, sometimes people that leave their families will talk to an action figure. I say that to him up front. Now, no matter how many questions you ask me, no matter where we go with this conversation, I want you to remember where we started. 
sometimes people bring action figures. Now, when Caleb gets really pissed off at my answers, I don't like your answer. Caleb, you asked me why. You asked me what experiences I had. You asked me what I knew. I started this conversation with, this is what I believe. Because I have experiences. This is what I believe, I have experiences. So, if you're going to keep yelling at me or telling me I'm wrong or asking me why, remember, you asked me first. I explained it. Now I'm explaining it thoroughly. The, the conversation still started with I gave you an answer. If you didn't like the answer, that's on you. That's totally on you. But I'm your dad. So I don't get to tell you just to go fuck yourself. Like, I don't get to just tell you to go away. And I would say that to Caleb even. I do not get to tell you to go F yourself. Because I want him to know when I tell someone to go F themselves, that means daddy means it. That means I want him away from us. That means don't stand up for the stranger because I told him to go away. F off is my hecka secka zeste bayo lie for me and my son because it tells my son this is a mountain lion. We're walking away from this conversation. I told him to go F off. We are done talking. Right? But So you can explain how to keep your kids safe with profanity even. By using profanity even. Because I made F off a safe word for my son. It means we're leaving. If you see me start walking away, make sure you're walking as fast as me. Um, but but that's, that's how you Socratically teach. It's also how the Air Force teaches. It's also how ISD, as a science of instruction, teaches. You tell someone what you're going to learn, and then you talk it out. Now, if it's in structured, if it's structured learning, and I've had this conversation with Caleb too, I explained to him curriculum design. I probably ruined him for forever being in public school, but still, I explained curriculum design to him. And the idea is you have to tell them what you're going to present and then you structure how you're going to present it over the course of the time. Now, if it's an unstructured, if it's unstructured, like discipleship is, today we're going to learn how to eat oatmeal. How long is that going to take? Dude, you have no idea. You have no idea. Because that's the point. You have no idea. That's why you asked me how to make oatmeal. So, for Caleb and I to have a conversation about one thing, usually he and I talk for 30 to 40 minutes about one thing. Like, Dad, why do you have an action figure? We'll talk for 40 minutes about why I bought that action figure. So, when he asked me a question of like, what's it like to be a disciple in the Bible? I said, you remember when you asked me about that action figure? Yeah. Imagine asking Jesus everything. Like, do you think he'd give you a short answer? I don't think he would. I mean, you heard me when I answered how, why did I buy that action figure? What do you think Jesus would say if you asked, if you asked Jesus, how do I brush my teeth? I think you'd wind up in a different zip code by the time that conversation was over. Like, holy crap. I walked up to Jesus and I asked him how to brush my teeth. And next thing you know, he's telling me my name is Steve and I live in Jersey. Like what happened? That's basically what happened. You asked a guy that had a very elaborate knowledge of how to live because he'd already been raised as a Jew in a time when that was a very, like, he was raised, enculturated on how to do everything. Just like I said, when I was raised as a Mormon, I learned how to fill up a kerosene heater. I brought all of the knowledge of the Mormon church with me 
when I left the Mormon church. As far as being just a, just being a living human being. So Jesus, before he left and did his own thing, if we even say that he left, before he did anything, he spent 30 years as a Jew when being a Jew meant he learned how to brush his teeth from a rabbi. Like, he had a lot of cultural, individual, human just being knowledge. He also was wicked smart by some people's expectations. Which means that if you asked a guy like that, how did you do this? He probably would have to tell you, you're gonna have to live with me for a week to even understand. Because he wouldn't even know how to explain it unless you were already Jewish. And he was trying to teach Gentiles. And Gentiles, they ate oatmeal. And he ate, uh, he, he ate um, matzo ball soup or whatever. I'm making obscure, this, that's the point. They didn't even eat the same food. They were so on different pages that they didn't even eat the same food. And he said, Jesus, teach me how to think. And he's like, dude, this is gonna take a bit. I'm, I'm pretty devout in my faith and Caleb and I spent 20, 45 minutes talking about just an action figure and then that's if he has a question now Caleb is my son Caleb also has learned how to talk not just how to ask and not just how to listen I will ask my son Caleb what's your favorite Pokemon card this week and then he will do that exact same thing to me about just his Pokemon card. Now, I have to help him sometimes. Like, hey, buddy, why is it strong? No, tell me why is it strong? What does it have powers in? What is it good at? Why do you think it's that good? Why? That's when I play Calvin and he plays Hobbs. That's how I get him to talk about his week about his day, about his friends, without prying at all. But it also teaches him how to orate and it teaches him how to teach a story because he can take one Pokemon card and he can talk for 30 minutes about it because me and him just talk about them. They're not tarot cards, but he can tell me that my buddy Steve gave me this card because he liked my other card, even though it was more powerful, but it's not. But he likes the pictures on it and that's how he tells me about his day. He likes the pictures on it, so I let him have it, even though it has less points. It doesn't work as good. You can't, you can't use it in fights, but he liked the face. So I let him have it because he liked the face. This one, though, it's got skulls on it, and it's way stronger, so I'm going to use it. And that's why I like it. And I'm like, okay, okay. Well, I mean, that makes sense. That makes total sense. Like, I, that works for me. because I don't even understand the rules of Pokemon and I don't care. Like, I just don't. I actually did not learn the rules of Pokemon because I didn't want to ruin story time with Caleb. If I had learned the rules, it might have irritated me. So I didn't. I'm really happy about that. All right, I'm at my store. I gotta buy the vape thing.